Okay, so this is lesson 6-6, six, six, page 249. So uh, this is all, 6-6 uh, six, six is all reasoning, uh, word problems with multiple steps. And uh, I'll just explain which ones I want you guys to do and, and uh, leave you guys to it. So it says Aaron has three slabs of bees wax and he plans to melt them all and use the wax to form 36 candles. If all the candles are the same size and weight, how much will each candle weigh? And it says use reasoning to decide. Well, uh, here's the weight of each slab of beeswax. So you'd have to total those. Okay. And then you'll get, um, we'll just call the total as, as equal to B. We don't know what B is yet, but that's going to be the total. Well, then you would simply divide whatever B is by 36, and you'll get your answer. Pretty straightforward. Down at the bottom, though, it does say, suppose Aaron wants each candle to weigh 0.5 pound or a half a pound each. It says, how many candles could he make with the beeswax? Well, um, I'll ask a question, and then I'll pull a stick here. Let's say he had one pound of beeswax. How many candles could he make, Mr. Coggin? Sorry, you weren't paying attention there. Miss Hinoza, if he had one pound of beeswax, how many candles could he make? You guys are making this harder than it is. Mr. Gonzalez. No, 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 no. Miss Pipkin. You guys weren't listening. So I'm just giving you an example, trying to simplify this problem with a, with a really simple example. TM. Two. Um, because if each one weighs a half a pound and he had one pound, he could make two candles. But um, he doesn't have just one pound. He has, well, we don't know yet, he has B pounds. And so... Uh, TM got that answer by simply dividing 1 by 0.5 or by a half. He knew that there's two halves and a 1. So what's going to be B divided by 0.5, and you'll have your answer. Okay? B divided by 0.5. Next page. I'm not worried about the bottom of 250. You can put a, put a line through that. Okay, page 251, it says Miranda mixed 34.5 fluid ounces of blue paint, 40.5 fluid ounces of red, and 2 fluid ounces of black to make purple paint. And then she mixed this and she poured the same amount of purple paint into each of 14 jars. Um, how much paint did she pour in each jar? Well, number one says, explain what each of the quantities in the problem means. Group one, erase points. So, um, well, each of the quantities, so 34.5 fluid ounces, um, is the blue paint. And then you can tell me what the 40.5 fluid ounces is. And then you can tell me what the two fluid ounces stand for. And uh, 
each of the quantities and then 14 um, is the number of jars. It kind of breaks the problem down. And then it says, describe one way to solve the problem. Well, there's more than one way to solve this problem, but I, I would total the number of fluid ounces. And then divide that by what? Let me pull a stick here. What would you divide that by, Mr. Andreessen? Yeah, by 14. So total, you would total the number of fluid ounces and divide by 14. And that would tell you how many ounces would go in each of the 14 jars. And it says, well, uh, what is the solution to the problem? Well, I'll put the answer down there, and I'm not going to worry about you explaining it because we've been going through the steps on how to solve it, so I already know you know how to explain it. Reasoning. Down at the bottom, independent practice, it says Sue made chicken soup by combining the entire can of soup, soup shown, so this can right here, and it looks like this can is, uh, they give us an amount. It's 18.6 fluid ounces. And uh, with a can full of water. So that's going to be another 18.6. It says, how many 10 fluid ounce bowls can she, can she fill with the soup? And how much soup is left over? Well, explain what the quantities in the problem means. Well, 18.6. Fluid ounces of soup, and then um, she's going to fill the can again of water, and um, and the ten fluid ounces of soup in each bowl. Okay. Describe one way to solve the problem. How about uh, 18.6 plus 18.6. I'm going to put that in parentheses. And then um, you would divide that by 10 to get your answer. What is the solution to the problem? Well, that's going to be this right here. And I'm not worried about you explaining it, so you can scratch out that explain in number six. So she uses this can, and then she fills this can with water and dumps it in the pot. And then she's going to set out 10 uh, some bowls that are all 10 ounces each. And we've got to see, see how many um, bowls of soup. Here's our bowls of soup that she can fill. And she's probably going to have some soup left over. Um, don't know how much, you know, maybe just a couple ounces. We don't know, but that was one of the questions that they ask. How much soup will be left over? So you have to answer that question too. How much is left over? Okay. All right. Page 252. Focus that. Okay, so um, it says Luca's cooking class is having a cooking competition. There are six teams. Each student uh, brought supplies that will be shared equally among the teams. So whatever the ounces or pounds of supplies, that's going to be probably divided by six. And it says the table shows the supplies Luca's 
uh, bra. If the supplies are shared equally among the teams, how much of each supply will each team get? So here's the, here's the table of supplies. And then they give us the price here. The first question it says, do you need all of the information given, so this is what was given here, to solve the problem? Do you need all this information to solve the problem? You do? No. no. Um, what, TM, what don't we need? No, actually, that we do need. My question is, what don't we need? What don't we need? Yeah, the price. We don't need this. This is unnecessary. You can just put an X through it. They're not asking us about money. They're asking about quantities. And so, do you need all the information given to solve the problem? No. You don't need... the cost of the supplies. Now, let me show you something here. Let's, let's look at the first one. Two sacks of flour and 4.5 pounds per sack. If there's six teams, and there is, and they each get the same amount, what TM, I'm going to keep picking on you. What don't we need in here? Um, how much? Well, we already decided it's, that's true. But I'm just talking about this right here, this very first one, two sacks of flour, 4.5 pounds per sack. What really don't we need to calculate something? Um, sack of flour? Yeah, we don't... This isn't going to factor in other than the fact that there are two sacks and we're going to add those up. So that's going to be 9. It'll be 9 divided by 6. So the, really the 2 doesn't come into play as far as our calculation. It does tell us that, we, that it's, each sack is 4.5 and 4.5 times 2 is 9. Okay. So... Um, Three boxes of rice, but then they tell you how much is in each box. And then the 15 pounds of ground turkey, well, that would just be divided by six. All right, so it says describe how to solve the problem. Well, there's multiple steps here. It's going to be 4.5 plus 4.5. I'll put that in parentheses, and that's going to be divided by six. That's just the first part. That's just the first part. So I'll let you guys do the rest of those. 3.5 plus 3.5 plus 3.5 divided by 6. And then 15 divided by 6. Number 9 down below here, it says model. No, yeah, model. Write equations to represent how much of each supply each team will get. Um... Well, I, actually, this is kind of what I did up here. Um, 4.5 plus 4.5 divided by 6. That's just the first equation. There's going to be 3. 1, 2, 3. And so I'll put a little 1 right here. And this one, it says, describe how to solve the problem. Well, actually, this, that's my bad. That's really not describing. So um, you would add each of the different supplies and divide by 6. And that's just the first one, but you would have to factor in the rice and also the ground turkey. Down here, number 10, it says, what's the solution to the problem? Well, 
once you write the three equations and then total them and solve them, then um, you'll have the solution. You don't need to explain it because all these steps that we're doing explains it as far as I'm concerned. And number 11, I'm not worried about. Put a line through number 11. Okay. Um, and I'm not worried about this page. I might have you do it later, but I'd like to see you guys do the vocabulary review. And so do those. So use your word bank here to fill this out. And then these are all true and false. And then um, it says, Mary says the digits in the quotient of 381.109 divided by 0.86 are, but she doesn't know where to place the decimal point. How can, how can Mary use the number since to place the decimal point? Well, you're just going to have to actually do this. So it'd be 381.109, and that's being divided by 0.86. And let me zoom in on that. So uh, let me pull a stick here. If you actually had a division problem like that, um, Miss Pipkin, what's the first thing you would do? Uh, you would move the decimal places over because what you do on the inside go, uh, is what you do on the outside. That's right. You're going to move this decimal over two places, and then this one's going to go over two places. So it would become 86, whoops, 86 going into 381. 10.9 and remember the decimal would go straight up all right so you have to figure out how many times 86 goes into it doesn't go into 3 doesn't go into 38 it would go into 381 probably three four maybe five times i don't know so anyways that's how you would set that one up and uh How can Mary use number since to place the decimal point? Hmm, not quite sure what they mean by that. We'll find out tomorrow. Uh, if you think you know, go ahead and put something down. If not, then we'll, uh, we'll look at it tomorrow. But go ahead and solve this, okay? All right, um, that's it. <coughs>